Okay, so I'm gonna share something with you that has been kind of revolutionary for me. It looks like pigeon, but it's not pigeon. See what's happening with the back leg. So we call this the 90-90 position. I was calling it the zigzag position before I became exposed to functional range conditioning, but you see here 90 and 90. This foot is nowhere near my butt. This foot is nowhere near my groin. It's kind of like pigeon, but it's not pigeon. And here's how you work in it. So in the functional range conditioning system, you do what are called pales and rails. And I'm not gonna break down the whole nerdy meaning of, of that acronym, but essentially, here's how it works. So you can join me doing this if you want to. I'm, I'm going to start incorporating these into my classes soon, uh, but I've been waiting because they're hard. And I wanted to get people on board with a lot of the other new stuff that I've been sharing over the last six months or so. So we're gonna start here and we're not folding all the way in the way we would do if we were doing just a standard pigeon passive stretch. What I'm gonna do is support on either side with my hands like this, try to square off my hips somewhat, and then I'm gonna kinda draw my chest out over that front shin and try to hover there, hovering there. And as I do so, with this front leg, I'm gonna pull towards me like I was trying to pull myself out over the leg and I'm pulling by pressing into the floor and pulling the floor towards me. You won't be able to see anything happening. This is an isometric contraction, but try it. So I'm hovering over this front leg. I'm pulling the bottom leg towards me against the floor. And actually you can see the mat kind of folding a little bit here from the pressure that I'm exerting. And I'm starting off at about 10 to 20% of maximum effort and then gradually increasing, increasing, increasing until I feel that I'm pulling just about as firmly and as strongly as I can as I breathe here. And let's take another five, four, three, two, one seconds there, and then I'm gonna ease up on that pressure, but I'm maintaining the same position, easing up on that pulling action. Now I'm gonna do the opposite. So I'm staying in the exact same position, but with that front leg, I'm gonna to try to push into the floor as if I was pushing the floor away from me and as if I wanted my whole body to go backwards, but I'm not gonna move anywhere. And again, I'm gonna start at about 10 to 20%, pushing, pushing, increasing, to like 30, 40, 50, continuing to slowly increase how much I'm pushing until I feel I'm just about maxed out. And breathing there, continuing that pressure without moving my body for five, four, three, two, one, and then letting it relax. And then I'm gonna come up out of that. So these are isometric contractions that we're doing in different directions. In the first, uh, first instance, we were contracting all of the tissue on the underside, everything that's touching the floor while stretching. So we're in the position yeah. where we're asking the joint to have a certain range of motion and then we're training strength. We're training controlled uh, neural drive and strength in that particular area. And then same thing, I was maintaining the position, keeping the joint in that place, in that particular range, and engaging all of the tissue along the front here. I mean, really, it's more through here. To pull, yeah? So two different directions, training the muscles around the joint to have awareness and control and strength. It's like strength training combined with flexibility training. It's awesome stuff. Here's the second part. So I'm gonna turn my body this way, supporting with my hands behind me. And I'm going to do the same thing we just did with that front leg, I'm gonna do with this leg. So first, I'm pulling. I'm pressing down through this foot and ankle, pressing down through the knee a little, and pulling as if I wanted to try and pull my body around to rotate and also in that direction by pulling against the floor. Now there's not much movement that happens but I can really feel that pulling action as I use all of the tissue on the inside of the leg, especially through the thigh and the hip joint. And I'm gonna, again, slowly ramp that up, slowly increasing how much I'm pulling. 
until I feel like I'm at just about as much as I can do here, choosing to work hard, choosing to really engage, remembering this is strength training. Do it with me for five, four, three, two, one, and then maintain the position, but relax that contraction. It's harder work than you might think. All right, same thing now as we did on the other side. Instead of pulling, I'm gonna push. So making contact into the floor and pushing as if I wanted to try and drive my body back behind me, pushing into the floor while maintaining the details of the position just getting that engagement to happen and slowly ramping it up as I push. Do it with me for five, maximum pressure, four, three, two, one, and then letting it relax. So that's the 90-90 position, doing pails and rails. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side. You can do it with me if you like. Okay, so changing sides. This side is noticeably harder for me on this back leg. I don't have as much internal rotation. So you may see, I don't know if you can see on the image, but it's like I'm pushed more this way because it's hard for me to come all the way up. If I lift my arms, I feel like I'm gonna fall over in that direction behind me. So that tells me a lot about the internal rotation that I have on my left leg, my left hip joint. Turning to face forward again. And so same kind of deal. I'm gonna hover the chest and the ribs out over that front leg. And I'm going to pull against the floor as if I was trying to draw myself forward. Pulling, slowly ramping up, getting to the maximum. I'll do it a little faster this time because we don't have as much time as we did on the other side to make this 10 minute video. So. Get to your maximum now, keep pulling, maximum engagement, maintaining the position, but really contracting for five, four, three, two, one, and then maintain the position, but relax. Now the opposite, we're staying in the position, but we're pushing as if I wanted to push my body backwards, pushing the floor away from me, as if I was trying to lift my torso, but I'm not gonna let my torso move, just pushing into the floor with everything that's making contact. Ramp it up, get to your maximum, stay steady there as you breathe, keep pressing nice and hard, strength and flexibility training, it's mobility work. Five, keep pushing, four, three, two, one, good. So yeah, just an introduction to this basic aspect. There's a lot of different variations and uh, ways of completing all of this, but this is where we're gonna start. This is gonna, I'm gonna begin bringing into my classes soon. Let's do the back leg. So same deal. First, I'm pulling. Pulling against the floor as if I wanted to draw my whole body this way and pull myself off in that direction as I pull. Ramp it up, keep breathing. Get it up to about 100%. Maximum effort for five more seconds. Four, three, two, one, good. And then stay in the position to let that contraction relax. And we're gonna go right into pushing. Push the floor away. It's like I'm trying to push my body back, really at an angle behind me, pushing. While maintaining the position, I'm not moving my body, I'm just engaging as if I wanted to try and move this very heavy body. Pushing against the floor with everything that's making contact with this left leg. Maximum effort, give it five more full seconds, really go for it. Four, three, two, 